new computer art tutorial here and what we're getting into tonight is getting into a city ruin scene. So we are taking a city image and going ahead and making it look like it's fallen apart and crumbling. Um, impending doom and gloom. So you can see my original image here. Um, key to choosing this image is uh, making sure you don't have too many buildings. So only have like four, five, six maybe buildings in this picture. Um, and so that's really what makes this effective um, as a technique. Um, really gonna be really challenging if the buildings are really small and there's a ton of them. So keep that in mind when you're choosing your image. So I'm uh, gonna toggle back to home in Pixlr E here. We'll go ahead and create new, choose full HD, and we'll name this project City Ruins and go ahead and click create. I've already queued up a Google image search for city buildings here and I've got an image that I think I like to use for this. I'm gonna go ahead and right click and copy or control click to bring up that menu and copy it. Paste my image in here, I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit. And I'm gonna to need to shrink this image down. You may need to enlarge your image to fill your space if it's too small as well. That looks pretty good at just figuring out what positioning I kind of want. Maybe I wanna get this area here so I can have the boat up in front there. Kind of nice angle to have it at. And now I'm gonna get rid of the background because the first part to this is replacing the sky. So I'm gonna take out this nice peaceful sky and put in a um, a sky that's a little more cloudy and devastated. So um, the tolerance to the magic wand tool is the first thing. So click on the magic wand tool and go ahead and click out here to select into your sky to just get that out. Um, if you go into your buildings here, you're gonna wanna turn down the tolerance. I kind of turned it up there because um, it's usually default set to 32. So I'm gonna hit Command D to get rid of that selection. Oh, cancel that. All right, so, um, and then when I click again with the tolerance lower, it does a better job of not going into my buildings. So that's why I went ahead and did that. Um, if I want to refine that selection a little bit, I might use my uh, polygon lasso tool and then choose remove from selection. So if there's an area like this part of the building here where it looks like some of this part got selected, I'm just kind of going along and clicking and making a selection area and then removing that area from the selection um, that's going to get deleted. So um, now at this point I could hit delete if I have my image layer selected and that gets rid of the sky back there. So I can put a new image in the background. Um, so I'm going to hit command D to kind of deselect and then I could actually maybe even take my eraser tool um, and start to clean up a little bit of some of this. You could also use the mask cutout tool for this as well. Um, if that tool seems to work better for you than the magic wand, definitely try that out um, as the mask tool is a nice feature and does work pretty well for this kind of thing as well. So the mask cutout feature is what I was talking about. So if you remove, do choose my remove mask, you could do magic mask or draw mask and try that out as well. If maybe you have more complicated clouds in your sky for the image that you're using. So this looks pretty good. Um, what I want to do now is go ahead and do a new Google image search for storm clouds. So I'm gonna go in here and type in storm clouds and see if I can find something really kind of nice and scary here. These look pretty good. Um, some of these nice dark ones, there's a good twister. This one's kind of nice, calling me with that bolt of lightning. So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of copy this image out, jump back into Pixlr, hit Command V to paste, and I'll wanna move this image behind my city image layer. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and stretch to fill my canvas up and that is looking mighty good. Oops, so move the city. Um, let's see, so maybe I move this up a little bit. No, actually I want it just down about there. Seems pretty good. All right, so next thing we're gonna do is start to do some of these cutaways from the building where the buildings kind of have been hit or crumbled or burning. So we're gonna go ahead and take our lasso tool with just our free lasso going and we are gonna do some cutouts and try to make them pretty big. Um, oh, I still have remove from select and selected from before. And we're gonna do some cutouts, like I was saying, of pretty big selection areas to be holes 
that will just hit delete. And we will fill them in with different images of building structures. So I'm gonna go take a corner off of this chunk of this building too, hit delete. Um, maybe take a big chunk out of kind of the middle of this building here and then hit delete. Again, wanna do this like six, five, six times or so. You know, maybe take a chunk out of the side of this building. Again, hit delete. Um, anytime you could make your lines more angular, um, I would recommend as that kind of creates a better effect, a more, um, you know, believable effect. And so that looks pretty good for the number of cutouts that I wanna make. Maybe I'll do like one more kind of cutout over here. Again, hit delete. Um, so now I have a few of those that I can fill in with patches. So I've also gone ahead and done some image searches for building framework. And so do uh, an image search for some Google frame or uh, Google image search for some building frameworks choose some images, copy them, and then try to paste them into your project. And then what we'll do is try to put those behind um, some of these shapes in our city that we have taken chunks out of. So I might take this part here and maybe I try to put it behind the city, so I'm gonna drag it behind, and it looks like it could go right here as this kind of patch um, is open there. So now I'll kind of zoom in on this um, layer, and here's another good point when we could use our um, cutout mask tool. So I'm, oops, not got the right layer selected. So I wanna take this photo, ah, it keeps giving me the, um, The city layer when I go to click and select. So I'm just going to move this patch in the back with my arrow keys for now. Um, so okay, going to go to cut out select. Um, I'm going to go to the draw mask feature and for my brush I um, want to make sure that it has a hard edge. So maybe even a square brush for this might work well, but I'm going to take a hard edge brush rather than a fuzzy edged brush um, and go ahead and cut out the part of this um, photo layer that I don't want to have showing. So make sure you have the photo layer of the patch of the framework that you just put in. And that's the part that we're going to try and do some removing from. And so again, I don't really want any of this part um, to be showing you know, maybe I have something like this going on. Maybe I even kind of like erase some of this, but only let it kind of go off the side. Actually, it looks like where this building should have been lined up to go is right about here. So now I have kind of those pieces um, back there and maybe I move this, can I move it down just a little bit? Yeah, that's looking good because, and I will, I'll kind of burn this part that's green here. Um, and again, we'll, uh, we'll go over using the burn tool in a bit, so I will be kind of able to hide that away. So I'm not gonna worry about it too much now. But um, going back to my drawing mask tool, I do kind of want to get rid of this, oops, gotta go remove, and get rid of this part that was kind of poking through that hole back there. All right, so that looks pretty good for one of my patches, and I'm gonna go ahead and zoom out just a little bit, and then try to get in another patch. So I already used this image. Like I said, I had another few tabs with some different framework images already queued up, ready to go. So I'm going to paste in another one, go back here and put this one, maybe just resize it a little bit so it kind of looks like it could fit um, behind this big hole right here. And maybe this will kind of go like here. And then I'm going to just drag it underneath this layer. Um, and let's maybe just, again, moving this with my arrow keys seem to kind of work the best. And so that seems pretty good. Let's see if I can enlarge this a little bit. That kind of seems like a good spot for that to go. And so I'm gonna go back to my cutout mask tool, remove from mask, draw mask, and then uh, go over this part that I don't want to show. Um, and some of it kind of came through over here actually too. So I wanna make sure that I get rid of all of that. All right. 
So going around everywhere where I don't want that image to show. Cool. So now I got those two slices in pretty good. I think I have a couple more. I probably shouldn't have tried to do all of these in my demo video, but I'm gonna go ahead and I keep on trucking. I'm just gonna do these two more. Um, I'm gonna hit Command V to paste this one in. And let's see, maybe I'll stick it somewhere like right over here. Maybe enlarge this just a tad. Kind of line it up just a little bit and then drag it underneath. So um, let's see, do I want this bigger, smaller? Maybe it's kind of like there. And then I'm just gonna move it down, just nudging with my arrow keys. And that looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and um, do one more mask. So cut out mask, choose the layer, uh, draw mask, remove from mask is selected. And then I'm just gonna go all outside the area of this cutout that I don't want to have showing. Cool. All right, so this section is looking pretty good as far as what we wanna have happen. I may come back in with like my eraser tool, make it really small. Um, maybe even like I was saying, go with a square eraser so you can kind of get like the chunks or kind of more like a jagged edge line from some of these um, you know, pieces that we've kind of like stuck in here. So kind of using the square eraser might help that kind of look a little bit more like, um, you know, it's broken a little bit more. All right, so um, yeah, so like I was saying, okay, so burn tool, that's the next part we need to do. We need to make this kind of darker. So dodge burn tool is right here. Um, we're gonna go to darken and then the um, strength, we might wanna turn that up a little bit. I'm gonna go like 60. And then wherever you go with the um, darken burn tool, I'm gonna turn the size up of this pretty big. Um, that's too big. I'm gonna go down to maybe 100 and so. Yeah, that seems pretty good. And so when we click and drag on an image, so I could start with like the buildings. So go to your top layer, the image uh, layer with the buildings on it. And if you click and drag, and if you click multiple times, what it does is it just burns or makes an image darker. And so I'm gonna do this definitely all around the patches where the buildings are supposed to be um, kind of like falling apart. And I'm just clicking a bunch of times and maybe I'll just make some really like long, like dragged out smoky sort of marks. And clicking up repeatedly will really make it darken the most, right? So I'm just gonna keep going around spots like that and really just kind of randomly go all over because I wanna kind of overall darken and have this like more darkened, gloomy look to things, right? So everything kind of looking like charred and smoky, um, you know, but trying to make sure you're really evenly spacing things out. And, you know, maybe around here, I'll just go over all the water. You can just kind of click and drag this as well. Um, but again, you gotta make sure you kind of like fade it out and kind of like blend it a little bit. So some of these are looking kind of like black, like smoke clouds, which is kind of cool. So I'm just kind of like riding with this. But um, the other thing you want to do is do this to your patches as well. You don't want to just leave these separate. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of burn a little bit of the um, patchwork that's in there too, because what that does, is it kind of helps blend those two things together. Um, so I'm gonna go over kind of the edge of this building again too, cause that was a little too um, light. But tricky, uh, you know, going over and blending everything with the burn tool, but that's really kind of gonna be a major part of creating this effect is the burn tool. Um, but again, I could spend more time, I could spend forever really trying to blend and smooth these out. Um, you know, hoping that you do the same with your work. Um, on your own you know, time as far as I'm just going through with a demonstration video. Like I said, really wanted to burn this inside part here so you couldn't tell that there was like trees and stuff from that picture that were in there before. So again, just going over all this part up here and making that sort of like blend in. 
and that is looking pretty good. It, it is kind of darkening um, a lot of this color in here, so there may be some things or some areas where I might even want to go in and like just delete um, some things. Uh, like, you know, some of those small areas of that bright blue in there that kind of like sticks out as not maybe fitting in here. But um, that is pretty much it for this tutorial. So, you know, again, I could go into, you know, a long, lot longer um, demonstration with some of the, you know, other buildings and blending the patches, but that gives you a pretty good idea of where you're headed here. And again, just looking at, you know, more of the finished example um, that I spend a little bit longer on here. So, um, you know, again, five or six patches or so, um, you know, and you can really get a nice, cool, uh, kind of dreary, dark city ruin project here in Pixlr. So hope you guys have fun getting creative with this project.